there's some very, very interesting dishes that we got. And the anticipation build up watching them cook all of the dishes in the kitchen, it was breathtaking. You can see the chilies mixed throughout and they added some Sichuan pepper, I think. It's absolutely spectacular. When you come to Yunnan, when you come to Dali, this is a dish you have to seek out. Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Dali in Yunnan, China. This is day one of our Yunnan food tour uh, that I'm taking with Zoba Tours. A big thank you to Frank for setting everything up. Today we're gonna be meeting up with Lushi and she's gonna take us uh, to especially focus on the bi-ethnic group for Chinese food. Ready to go on a, a food tour today? Yeah. We're heading first this morning to a place called Shijo, and we're gonna have breakfast there. That was about a 30 minute drive, but it was a beautiful drive passing by the mountains and villages and the, the mist, absolutely gorgeous scenery. Ni hao. The most, uh, yeah, the most popular <laughs> breakfast for locals. We are filming a food show. We will put it on the screen. And we set a piece of pea soup. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Ah, nay, this is why it's not too green. This is why it's not too green. Let it show the effect better. Good. Let it show more. Oh, yeah, let it show more. It's too green. Oh, yeah, it's too green. Oh, yeah, it's too green. Yeah. Pea porridge. Now we have this. Pea porridge, right? Maybe I take this away. This is your lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get started eating, I just want to quickly introduce you to Lushi. <laughs> she is gonna be our guide uh, in Dali and she's very knowledgeable about food. She has a cooking school. Yeah, my cooking school is called Rice and Friends. Rice and Friends? Yeah. Okay, and I'll leave the link in the description box. She knows a lot about food, so it's, a, it's an honor to be able to hang out with her and to walk around and eat. Okay, let's eat. Mother, uh -huh. and it's only the same thing since she was a teenager girl. So it was wow. like forever. Yeah, it's like absolutely my favorite. It's my, the, the most the delicious the same, one. She's I been have selling ever. this since yeah. she was a teenager, right yeah. here in the same place? Yeah, helping her mother. Wow. Yeah, so it's the uh, most the delicious one I ever find. Okay, all right. Yeah, ask I asked her to give you extra chili. Oh, really, my guess you. is like a job. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay? Extra, Hi, chili. Yeah. extra chili is always okay for me. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, it's like, a, you can taste that it, it has that like kind of starchy pea texture to it. Every now and then you can taste little bits of peanuts, you can taste the dried chili. I got a chili seed in that bite. Oh, it's delicious. And you can tell it's really kind of filling and warming. Mm. I like it. It's really nice and goopy. We have here, this one is with the, the hardened pea cake and then also with some noodles and also with all the, the same, lots of the same seasoning as well. It's there's fully, fully coated in that, that chili oil and sauce. So this looks kind of like a slurpers kind of a dish. Mm, mm. The vinegar in there is really nice. Definitely a totally different texture from the porridge. You can taste all those individual noodles. And then the hardened pea porridge is, yeah, it almost has like a tofu texture to it. Mm. I really like the noodles. Mm. I can also really taste the pickled radish that she added in there. That adds another like vinegary sour component to it. This is delicious. Oh. <laughs> 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 
谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，拜拜，麦哥。The family that runs it is so friendly, so nice. They really loved Micah too. And we are on our way to go eat something called Baba next. So this is my favorite Baba place. Okay, we've arrived to Lushi's favorite Baba shop. And Baba is this, it's like a bread circle. There's both uh, sweet and savory. And we're gonna have a chance to, to watch her make it before we eat it. They call it a Chinese mini pizza. For Chinese pizza. Mini, mini pizza or pita? What an amazing place. So there are three types of the baba over here. And first is like this. This is like the plain baba. The dough is made from um, wheat flour, water, yeast, and the baking powder. So roast jam, sweet red bean paste, and then brown sugar. so impressive to stand here and watch her as she makes this uh, this traditional kind of a, a pastry, a, a Chinese Yunnan pastry. And the dough is <laughs> very good. The dough is almost, it's so, it, 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 it's almost like runny dough. And she adds in a, a handful of lard, straight lard, which provides some massive flavor, I can guarantee. And then for, oh, there now she's adding in some minced pork and some green onions. Oh. Amazing how she is able to work that dough and because that dough is so it has it's elastic it's almost like elastic like rubber it's amazing how she works that dough and how she she's mixed in like multiple handfuls of minced pork and green onions and and then just flattened it out and then she, she balled it up into like almost like a cinnamon roll looking uh, piece of bread and then she added in some more part pork and now she's rolling it out into like that that pizza shape and that is there it is and now it's being brushed with lard also One is the, the charcoal at the bottom, and then one is the charcoal at the top. And so he said it was getting too hot on the bottom, so he transferred it to the to the, the bottom, the, the the baba. And now he's fanning that flame. And now that the charcoal is of perfect temperature, he's uh, cooking it both from the bottom and the top. So then the the baba is just stuck within the middle and it's just getting heat from all directions. Oh, this Salty and sweet. This is as fresh as could be. He literally just pulled them out of the, the oven. I think I'll go for the, the sweet version first. The bread is still steaming. It's really fluffy, yet it feels crunchy on the outside because of that lard. And then, oh, on this side, there's, there's more. This is the, the rose jam. Oh, it kind of squeezed out. Mm. Oh, there's red beans in there too, sweet beans in there too. Oh, wow. Oh. That is awesome. It's so hot, it's so fresh. It's like the, literally the perfect consistency because it's slightly gooey, but crunchy, crispy at the same time. And you've got that sweet inner filling and it does have a little bit of a like floral aroma to it. Wow. So while perhaps a Western pastry uh, would use butter to, to keep it flaky and moist. Uh, this uses just pure lard. That pork which you sort of mixed in as well as uh, there's some on the top on this piece, depending on the piece that you get. Oh, oh, that gooey crispiness, contrast. This one you can taste the meatiness of it. It's actually rich because there's so much lard in there. Wow. 
<laughs> so good. So that's lard too, right? That baba, it literally almost has like the flaky crunchiness of a, of a croissant. But instead of butter, it's all lard. That is just sizzling. We're having one more version, and this is a very special version. This shop, they only make about 20 per day. So you gotta get lucky to, to get it. Um, and the difference is that it, the dough is made with caramelized brown sugar, which is mixed into the dough rather than just the plain dough. And so you can see it has a dark color. It actually looks like a giant cookie. Very hot. Oh yeah. It has a molasses flavor from that roasted brown sugar. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great trip. Yes. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, we're going this way. Okay. <laughs> that like sets a, a new level for a pastry for me. Oh, there's baba. Baba all over. We're walking through the streets now and we've sort of transitioned from the old town to this looks like we're in just a giant flea market with everything. Uh, people are selling clothes and tools. There's fruit, there's vegetables, there's Chinese medicine and herbs and there's tea stalls. It's, I think, I think everything is available at this market that you're looking for. Oh wow, look at those giant, whoa, those look like gigantic lemons. Wow. <laughs> It's just action packed at this market. I am just fascinated. Whoa fish out of water. When you walk through the market, you'll see all sorts of different exotic looking mushrooms and flowers. We're walking through the, the chicken station right now. Uh, and we're on our way to go to a place where they're gonna make the, a famous, a well-known Yunnanese type of rice noodle. squeezes out of that grinder. It definitely looks like intestines that are coming out. What's totally different and what sets this type of Yunnanese very unique rice noodle apart from other rice noodles is that they use pre-cooked rice to make this type of noodle. So, so you can see all of the rice around here, it's already steamed rice. And then the steamed rice, she sticks it into, this is actually a, I think this is a, an old school sausage meat grinder. And uh, then she grinds the rice into a, a paste, into a dough. Oh, and she's actually redoing it again. So I think they, they grind it through there a couple of different times. Uh, but I have a little taste. Yeah, it has like a dough, almost like Play-Doh texture to it. Whoa, that's really gummy. Mm. Right now it's flavorless because there's no flavor in it, but uh, they make a variety of different shapes out of it. So they'll make thin strips for noodles. They make it into a block and you can like hand cut your noodles. Uh, they make it into a paper thin sheet, uh, which I think is used almost like a pancake, uh, but it's so diverse. So many different dishes can be prepared from this type of rice uh, delicacy preparation. <laughs> okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bye bye. Have a nice trip. Thank you, you too. Yeah. Oh, right here is where they make the cheese. And this one is one night old wheat. Just a family business, they make cheese. We came back to this little courtyard back here, it's filled with textiles. It's really, really picturesque back here. And so he's gonna demonstrate how they make a traditional Yunnanese cheese using a wok and then kind of stretching it out. In most parts of China, dairy and cheese is not common or non-existent. 
And so Yunnan is one of the only provinces in China where you'll find a traditional form of cheese. And there's a lot of history that goes back. Possibly it was introduced by Mongolians. Yes, to, to this Mongolians. area, to this specific area. Of yeah, Yunnan. yeah. When they came to this ar area and during uh, like the AD, something like uh, 1200. Very nice, very tough, uh -huh. very rough. So it breaks very easily. And he's using his thick chopsticks and a very smooth. Look at his. Look at how how strong his. Look at how strong his thumb is. Uh, this one is a bit too hard. Ah, ah. 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 Mongolia cheese. It comes like uh, these pieces, <clears throat> so the yellow pieces like that. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, so, so then it just dries like that. So after you put it under the sun for one day, it becomes like that. From here, you can grill it and you can oh. deep fry it. And tonight we're going to have a salad made from this. Okay, I'm going to have a chance real fast to try making some cheese. Stir it in one direction slowly until it separates. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, you kind of like sp Hold on. spread. I need more. And I need then bring more space it together. <laughs> well, that's a yeah. Oh, good. Very good. Yeah, exactly like that. My, I've never used my thumb like this ever. Oh yeah. Oh man. If you're not good with these thick uh, chopsticks, <laughs> your cheese will come to a melting point. Chopsticks. Okay. And now you just kind of delicately work it with your. You gotta stretch it. Oh, we got a couple holes in my cheese, and then and then wrap it around. I got a little bit of a holy cheese. My cheese didn't turn out the most pretty, but it was a lot of fun trying. And now we're gonna move over to this little corner and try some of the cheese in different forms and styles. So we got two different types of cheese. This one is just the fresh cheese, like kind of like the mozzarella that cheese that I just made fresh and then this one actually was pretty cool how he made it he took the dried cheese that the one that dries for a day and then he uh, he filled it up he he wiped a layer of rose jam onto it and then he grilled it over the hot plate raveled it up onto a chopstick to to make it turn into a, that, that spiral and you can see it's kind of crispy as well it kind of has a yeah, definitely a dried cheese kind of flavor to it. It's kind of mild in cheese flavor. And then you taste that rose jam. And then it has that smoky taste from being um, grilled and bubbled. Mm. Oh, that's really nice. That's a great combination. That's almost like, like eating cheese with a cranberry sauce, almost. And then the final one we have here is deep fried cheese. And you can see that, that bubbly skin that almost looks like cracklings. Deep fried one is a little bit, it's a little strange. It's kind of dry and kind of tasteless actually. Okay, oh, you put some sugar in it. Turn the bell. That was a completely new type of cheese experience and both in the making and in the style of eating. Very, very interesting and what a, what a cool courtyard. We jumped back in the car. We're Kind of, kind of bumpy. We're driving down the cobblestone road, uh, but from here we're driving to the village market. This looks like a pretty cool market, kind of on the side of the mountain, and we're all gonna see what we find here. This market is so cool because it has such a community mountain feel to it. People from all, this entire little area community, they come here uh, to socialize, to sell things that they specialize in. Another great market. Oh, so much to see. So many smells, so many colorful ingredients. There's food cooking, there's fresh ingredients. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, 
钱。<laughs> Something that's very common in the bi ethnic culture culinary scene is pork sashimi, completely raw pig. And so she is slicing up some pork right here that's all going to be pork sashimi. And she just cut me a piece of the skin. Looks kind of like a little piece of chewing gum here. Whoa. That is kind of like a piece of chewing gum. Mm. Okay, it's actually quite awesome though. It's very leathery, like extremely leathery, kind of like blubbery with some chili oil. That could be really good. And she gave me another piece, and this one I'm reaching in. You can, this is, these are all the sauce condiments. You can mix your sauce, but since we're just kind of standing here eating, I'm just going to eat a little bit of that chili oil on this piece of pig skin. It's definitely interesting. It's pretty good actually. Okay, with that chili oil, that, that makes it better, that's for sure. This is some pretty hardcore eating right here. Just straight up fresh pig, just minced up. You get a piece, you get some slices of the fat, you get some uh, minced raw pig, and you get the skin. Skin was pretty tasty, uh, but we're actually going to go to a restaurant for lunch right after this. That was a very cool experience. It's called a, a chicken mushroom because it tastes like chicken. Oh, it does kind of taste like chicken. It's really, really flavorful. The market was very cool, especially the lady who served me the raw pig skin. She was amazing. We're now off to go eat lunch. We just made it to the lunch restaurant and we're in the kitchen now. I think you can come in the kitchen to put in your order. They have the, the fridge just full. It just looks like a rainbow of colors. There are flowers, there are mushrooms, vegetables. Very good things are happening in this kitchen. We have pork sashimi and we have the this uh, pine needle oh, salad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you can see yourself here. You can see yourself in the screen. <laughs> yes. People in Yunnan are so friendly too. Let's check this guy out. Look at the gills on that mushroom and look at that, that blue color. If I didn't know this was edible, I would definitely think it is a, a dangerous mushroom. Now he's preparing all of the dishes that require a walk and his walk skills are just Impressive. He just flies on that walk, on and off the fire. It's roaring like a jet engine. I think they are done with all of our dishes. They have cooked everything. That was one of those meals that you watch being cooked and it's just breathtaking. Oh, nice. Very nice. Sit down. Micah, sit down. Micah. Most of the dishes that we ordered, these are Yunnanese Bai dishes, uh, the Bai ethnic group. And there's some very, very interesting dishes that we got. I'm, I'm like actually, sh this, is a, this is one of those meals where I'm starting to, to shake a little bit because I'm so excited for, to taste all of the dishes and the anticipation build up watching them cook all of the dishes in the kitchen. It was, it was breathtaking. I got a little taste test, a little teaser of the skin back at the market. So normally throughout China, 
uh, especially pork would be cooked pretty pretty well done pretty pretty thoroughly and I my mother is Chinese and my my Chinese family they uh, have often uh, they always indicate that you, you really need to cook that pork well done this is the exact opposite of what you've been told about cooking pork all the way through. This is pork sashimi. That is just straight up minced pig, red meat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and dip this in the sauce and you can see the sauce is just loaded as well. There's lots of dry chilies in there. There you can smell the Sichuan pepper. Um, I think there's probably some vinegar and maybe some sesame oil in there as well. Oh, oh. Oh, that's delicious. It's definitely raw, raw pork. You don't really taste the rawness of it because it's doused in that sauce. And that sauce is just a, a complexity of chili. You taste the sourness. You taste the, the floral kind of citrusiness of the Sichuan pepper in there. The sauce is an absolute must. That makes it crazy good. Mmm. Oh, that one is a little less chewy. Then I want, had the one before that almost has like a, a little snap to it. And this is a, an eggplant salad. So they fire roasted the eggplant and then they peeled out the insides all nice and mushy and, and beautiful. And then they mixed it with some dry chili flakes. There's some herbs in there. And the trick, the, the secret of this dish is he added a, a spoonful of lard into the wok. He brought it to a, a rolling boil and then just poured this all over it. And then they mixed it all up. And so that's, that's this dish. It looks absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's kind of served a little bit cold, but that's amazing. You can taste the smokiness of the eggplant. You can taste the dry chili in there. The herbs are mixed in. There's green onions. There are, there's some cilantro in there too. Next up, this is also a really interesting dish, which is a pine needle salad. And Lucy was telling me that this is one of the only species of pine, pine tree that is, that you can eat the needles that are edible. They blanched the pine needles and then they mixed it with a bunch of spices. You can see the chilies mixed throughout. Um, they added some Sichuan pepper, I think. And then again, I think he added some lard to this as well, to, for the dressing, of course. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay, immediately, the first thing that you taste is that kind of like aroma that you smell when you when you smell a pine tree but you can taste that in your mouth oh it's wonderful and then the needles they have a, a little bit of a crispness to them then you've got all that that flavor from the dry chili okay we've got some broad beans which are also stir-fried excellent Oh, those have more of like a silky texture rather than a starchy texture. Yunnan is so famous, so well known throughout China for their mushrooms. Mm. Oh, the mushrooms are really, really tender. Mushrooms are, they're literally like meat for the depth of umami and flavor that they can provide. What an amazing feast. And this one is just a classic stir fry. You added in some dry chilies. There are some are they spring onions or leek? Um, spring onion and garlic leek. Oh, well it has such a smoky wok taste. It's a little oily and delicious. Absolutely delicious. And one more dish that they kindly uh, offered us, gave us, is a snail salad. Mmm. Oh, that kind of like pops in your mouth. It's not even chewy actually. It's more, it more again, it kind of like snaps in your mouth without being, without being elastic -y at all. Okay, all the food is incredibly good, but I think as far as like uniqueness and by like cultural dishes, this pine uh, needle salad is one of, the, one of the highlights of the meal right here, along with the, the pig sashimi, of course. absolutely spectacular. When you come to Yunnan, when you come to Dali, this is a dish you have to seek out. Okay, now I'm gonna move back into the pig sashimi and I'm gonna make a bite that counts. I'm 
just blown away by this entire meal. The flavor of chilies is so well pronounced. The, the natural ingredients, the, the herbs that they use in their cooking, I love the mushrooms. I love the naturalness of this entire feast and just how they, they, they've made such good use of what's local, local ingredients. And I think that's what makes this food and this meal so incredibly good. As well as just all oh, those, they, they, they cook with love here, that's for sure. Mm. I'm very, very happy right now. Wow, that was just an absolutely stunning meal. I'm a little off balance after that meal. That was a crazy good meal. Xie thank you. Xie Xie, thank you. Bye bye. On the way driving back towards the old town of Dali, we are stopping by Erhai Lake. This is a beautiful high elevation lake. The water is, is gorgeous and it, it stretches really, really long. If you look at a map, this is really a, a long and narrow lake and it's beautiful scenery. Another one of the iconic landmarks of Dali. drove over to Dali Old Town and this is a beautiful walking streets, there's shopping, there's restaurants, it's very picturesque. We're gonna have dinner. Lunch was not pig sashimi and lunch was not that not that long ago. But I'm I'm ready for dinner. We got a table upstairs and this is like a an old style house, really, really nice restaurant. I got a seat right here on the wall, but you don't wanna lean back too too far. <laughs> Pretty cool. We ordered some of their signature dishes here, and it really is, it looks really, really good quality. Uh, this is a nice sit-down restaurant. We got some of their spare ribs. We got, this is a dish that I'm excited to try, which is chicken, uh, somehow kind of marinated in pu'er tea. And pu'er tea is a fermented black tea, which is famous in Yunnan. Look at all those chilies just caked up on there. That is absolutely gorgeous. Sichuan and pepper. Sichuan pepper, it's just loaded. Oh, and there's just layers of chicken as well. Yeah, that is amazing. You can taste a little bit of that tea flavor in there, um, but then that chili is so fragrant. The Sichuan pepper to eat out of there. Oh, 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 those chilies. They have so much flavor, and they're just purely crispy. That along with rice is just insane. So those are all thin strips of cheese. In this cheese salad, there's carrot and all the thin strips of white. I think that's thin strips of cheese. There are peanuts in there. Mm. Oh, that's a lot of flavor. And it almost has a like a like a smoky bacony flavor to it. It's kind of like a papaya salad, but but with strips of cheese. Oh, oh. oh, it's so tender, and it has like this silky texture to it. And then, hmm, oh, that's just like like pure comfort porkiness. This one is a Dai style salad, and it originates. Uh, near to the the Myanmar, maybe Lao border, and there's mushrooms in here. There's sawtooth herb, and there are there are pieces of ginger as well. This looks very light and very refreshing. Oh, a little dribble. I really like the ginger in there, and tangy astringent dressing. Fresh food, really refreshing, really really tasty. cheese salad. This is 
is another beautiful looking dessert. I think it's some type of like, it looks kind of like yogurt. That is, that is nice. That's delicious, yeah. Just finished with dinner. Totally different from what we ate earlier in the day, from the meal we ate earlier in the day. This is more of a modern, uh, but really, really well done restaurant. A little bit trendy, delicious flavors, and it's right within the old town here in Dali. Wow, that was, that was a lot of food. It's been a fantastic day of Chinese food in Yunnan. Oh man, the highlight for me today was probably lunch. That was a spectacular meal. I want to say a huge thank you to Lushi, uh, who guided us everywhere today. And also thank you to Frank from Zilba Tours. Uh, he put everything together. I'll have all the links in the description box below so you can check them out. And thank you very much for watching this food tour. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching. And Bye-bye from Dali, China.